Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. We're picking up right where we left off uh, in the last episode. We were integrating the dollars value object in place of the integer primitive. Uh, and I was just about to have ending principle return dollars. So let's go ahead and do that. going to fail because all of our tests are operating on integers. Oops, wrong button. I don't know what the quick key is to do the same search again. And I haven't been able to find it. I still wonder if maybe I should have a, my own assert equals method that takes dollars, or an integer and then dollars. That might be nice. Hmm. Well, let's, let's see how cleanly it reads. I'm, I don't know if I want to do that. I kind of like, the reason I'm not sure if I want to do it is this is really nice and explicit, and I like that. Okay, those tests pass. Thank you, Eclipse, for not running all my tests. Uh, um, okay, so now really all the tests pass. Let's see, what should we do next? Well, oh, and once again, I forgot to do my check-in. The reason I'm worrying more about check-ins now is because uh, primitive obsession, as I've mentioned, can go so wrong. Uh, that you might need to re revert to a uh, previous version in your version control system. So I will check in more aggressively when I'm doing uh, primitive, uh, primitive obsession refactorings as well. Okay, so right here we've got interest earned. That needs to be operating on dollars. So let's take what we've got, which is working just fine, and pull up tax rate and interest rate. And we're going to feel a little bit of the pain at the duplication between these two classes uh, because we have to do the same work twice. But again, I, I do think these are different concepts. I'm expecting that much in the long term, or actually past now, we're not going to have a lot of uh, duplicated work. And if we do, then that's a clear signal that I need to do something else. Okay, so that doesn't compile. Okay, so that passes now. Oh no, it doesn't. What am I doing wrong? Oh right, now all this is going to require dollars. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to just hack that in. I'm actually going to. Um. Well, this passes, right? Yeah. I think I am going to just have to sort of hack that in. This is going to be a bit weird. I don't want to use the new subtract method because I am trying to take very small steps. So. OK, now I'll use the new subtract method. Okay, so back here, um, I said that I didn't want to keep amount amount uh, public, but I'm not sure how to do this cleanly in any other way. Um, I mean, I could say apply interest to dollars, 
but that's just moving the work out of interest rate into dollars and I don't see that being a great thing because in tax rate we've got this equation um, which com is very domain specific compound tax for I don't know I wouldn't want to put that into dollars I don't think compound tax for um, so I think this is a case where I'm going to want to leave the amount as a public method because or I could introduce a multiply parameter uh, but well let me just stop and think about this I'm gonna pause the video and sort of cogitate on this and get back to you okay I'm back I uh, I was looking at this tax rate class and this piece right here uh, if I were to try to have divide and multiply inside of the dollars class, this would be ugly. I mean, it'd just be ugly. So I think what I want to do is actually introduce or keep this as a public method, um, which means that I need to write some proper tests around it. So let's go do that real quick. I'm going to call that to int instead of amount to really emphasize that it's a data conversion. And of course that is amount. Now I expect that to pass. Yeah. Now we'll rename that. And not delete it. Okay. So what that means is, yeah, amount dot two int times rate, and then good. And inside of tax rate, taking two big steps, aren't I? Uh, let's back that up. Okay, and let's go ahead and factor this out. Okay, and I broke something here. Well, that was nice. Okay, yeah, so now that's reading nice and clean again. Now what we need to do is have these guys return dollars. Which is going to break all kinds of stuff. Now I could have a constructor on dollars that took a double, but I don't want to do that just yet.
that's passing, but something else should fail. No, I guess not. Why did simple... Oh, we're not using simple tax for it anywhere. That's why it didn't fail. Why did I write a method that we're not using anywhere? Um, maybe I shouldn't have, but it did just seemed like part of the domain here. You're really not supposed to write methods you don't need, but uh, I thought it helped communicate a little bit, the distinction between simple tax and compound tax. Um, I don't know if that method will ever be used, so writing it was perhaps not a great idea, but it's only one line of code, so I'm not going to stress about it too much. Yeah, so there, we've got that test passing. If I were just looking at the green bar, I'd be like, yay, great, everything's good, except that our code doesn't even compile. But, oh man, I, I don't really want these videos to turn into Jim's daily rant, but uh, it really bugs me that Eclipse doesn't run all the tests by default. It is useful to just run one test or a set of tests occasionally, but by default, when I press that button, I want to see all the tests run. And maybe there's a command out there that I don't know about. So if you guys are watching this and saying, hey, Bozo, you know, just do this command instead, uh, please tell me. Leave a comment or something. I would love to know about it. Okay. So tax rate, I believe, is now completely deprimitive, obsessive, did. Yeah. So I can get rid of that. Now let's move on to interest rate. working. So I believe interest rate is now D primitive obsessed and that's done. So now we just have stock market year left and two minutes left in the video. Can I make it? Eh, maybe. Let's see what we can see. That's going to cause that to fail. Test should fail now. Yep. Okay. And interest earned is now going to be dollars. Failure. All right. Okay, so I think we have actually taken all the primitives out entirely. Uh, we've got some nice clean code here. Total withdrawal, subtract zero, starting principle. Um, this could possibly be cleaned up a little bit, but wow, I mean, it's compare this to what we started with and how confusing it was. Um, I'm I'm really happy with this code. I'm going to go ahead and put this on Git. I will go ahead and commit this now, and I'll put the, uh, the information for GitHub or wherever it is on the video. We'll see you next time with something completely new, UI perhaps. Talk to you later.